All right, Karen. <laughs> we are exploring um, Sumi-e. That is the Japanese monochrome painting. Um, it came originally from China, but they kind of uh, a bit modified it in Japan. They made it more simple. So in Chinese, it's still more detailed. Uh, and then um, the Japanese made it, let's say, um, the saying would be, um, say more with less. Yeah, so this is the, like the main idea of the sumie. And so in general, they have three topics that would be uh, flowers and birds. Then the second is the landscapes. And third is uh, animals. Uh, people in Sumia are painted like very rarely, mostly just like a secondary object and to show the scale. So it can be the boat with a fisherman or it can be like a monk walking in the mountains. So just to show how big are the mountains and you know. so and actually all these art came so it was mostly Zen monarchs yeah who were practicing it and, and so probably it's like from 16th century those those times you know? yeah but of course we're not doing like sumie in like really really traditional way we're a bit modifying yeah more to watercolor um, um, practicing so improving our watercolor skills but just taking those um elements of Sumi. Yeah? yeah. So let's check. I'll tell you about my setup. So then I have, uh, of course, then I have usually two waters. It's usually for watercolors, one stays clean. Then as we talked, I have watercolor, but in tube because the really amount of paint, it's really a lot. So yeah, using the, the boxes will be just impossible you have to like um, yeah, use lots of time to fill up your brush uh, brushes so uh, I have one brush that is squirrel so it's natural hair the other ones are synthetic uh, this one I use just mostly just to kind of wet the paper and then uh, the, the two small ones of course then also to paint. And since I use today like a small size of paper, so it's a half of A4. Yeah, so then the synthetics also, I don't, I don't have, uh, I have them in a small size. The squirrel, I have the only size because it's, it's expensive and you know, it's like, uh, uh, but um, yeah, we'll not get into details, you know, synthetic squirrel, uh, like, or yeah, the main idea, of course, the natural brushes, they can take lots of water and the synthetics, they don't take the, like the opposite, they give away the water. Yeah, so probably that's the main difference. And yes, so let's talk a bit about the paper. So um, as I said, I have prepared where we're gonna paint. I have the computer papers to sketch and um, a little bit about my analyze of the cats I did. So these two cats are um, painted on 200 cellulose uh, paper. So what's the difference? This one, I made all paper wet and then I tried to paint the cat. Um, and then of course it didn't work. You can see all the paper got curvy. And then of course here I got uh, some paddles and then kind of you're frustrated. You either try to take off some paint of this paddle or you just leave. And then of course you get this, this stripe when the paint is dry. And, and of course the main idea when we make paper wet is because we want the border to be this fluffy. Yeah? So in this case with this cat, I didn't make my paper wet at all. And then I just made, you know, some, uh, so like with the, with a big brush, made the tail, 
and then you just go with a clean brush and just by the edge with the clean brush with water you can kind of create a bit of the, the fluffiness yeah? so bleeding yeah um yeah it, yeah so so i'd i'd call it bleeding i think where the where the where you your paint spreads bleeding thanks karen let's let's use this um uh, yeah terminology <laughs> i'll i'll know no, cool so and that is good no no it's yeah bleeding sounds better thanks yeah and okay and these two so here i also went to spend the money for the cotton paper um and honestly okay <laughs> still probably need, need to um, need to practice because i have lots of experience of course with cellulose um and this one is 300 but the cellulose and here are actually so this would be my best choice both for price because i can make it wet so i made all the paper wet and then i could have these uh, nice soft edges and um yeah but um so with the cotton of course the paper holds holds like lots of water and for example all this fluffiness was still going on like already i don't know like time after i stopped painting it still was continuing and i struggled so much to leave the eyes clean so i've painted and as usually with the clean brush you kind of just clean out but it was like closing and closing and closing like for um eternity so yeah, of course with them like you, you need the time to give it to dry and then you go for the details and well so <laughs> yeah but let's experiment and then we can again compare uh, the same kits on 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 other other papers um uh, which, which kit would you like to let's say start with or which ones you're interested more and then we see with the time I like the two on the right hand side. I like the Siamese. I think that's lovely. Those two, yeah. Yeah, yeah those ones turned out better than <laughs> the others, but uh, <laughs> I mean. I'm happy to play. And I've got a cat here near, very near me if I want uh, something to refer yeah. to. But cool, yeah. Let's start with these. And if we have time, we also can experiment with the others. I don't really have any experience with watercolors, I don't really use them. So. Okay, yeah, then it will be like very huge experiment for you. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, then of course we can take just our computer paper uh, and what, um, so, uh, okay, before we go to the strokes, just going back again a bit to Sumie. So in Sumie, of course, four main materials, then it's ink, but of course, then we are using watercolor today. And then it's, um, so water in itself, it's like the technique is in using lots of water, uh, the same like watercolors. And then uh, brush and um, and the paper. Yeah, and Sumi, yeah, the more classic way they're using rice paper, yes, but watercolor paper also kind of suitable. And what's interesting in Sumia, they kind of hold the brush vertically, yeah, and they have this huge, and then like, of course, you can you can kind of uh, move it around a bit, but the main kind of yeah, but uh, it's um, and 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 so a little bit about the strokes. Um, so here I have like printed out a bit. Um, so just quickly, it's the Sumia theory, like for those people who want to start doing it, they have like these four plants that are also kind of classical uh, in Japan. So it is bamboo, that's the wild orchid, chrysanthemus, and the plum. So practicing painting all these plants, you practice different strokes, yeah, that each, each plant kind of, um, should have and then later on you kind of go on painting other stuff yeah? and the idea also that you kind of make it automatize the strokes you learn them like really 
by heart and so then later you can just concentrate yourself on like contemplating looking for this essence of the object and um yeah, so uh, i think i read that we even have like a special there is a special uh, like carpet for calligraphy or something that you can like using only the water so you practice calligraphy and then you can see it uh, while it's wet and once it's dry then you can go and repeat again so something like this could also work for sumia you keep on continue practicing those strokes till you reach because it's also like what's the difference between what we are doing today in sumia it's supposed to be that the stroke is the final stroke yeah but in our case we're not gonna be like this let's say today if i do the tail and then i can go second time if i need i can correct it yeah so it will be still more watercolor technique so let's uh, let's take just a paper and let's practice a bit the strokes maybe we might so that we might need for the cats yeah since the cats are our topic i am putting my um paint so let's say i will have two piles one pile here is just um, pure paint. I will not have it diluted with the water because in some moment I like want to have it like really intense. Yeah, and the second pile I will have uh, with more water um, for more uh, uh, more liquidish, and then of course. Yeah, this technique, as you can uh, imagine, uh, is it's like black and white, but of course you use lots of the gray tones to show all the <clears throat> all the intensity. Yeah, so let's um, just take um, any uh, brush. Yeah, I'll make let's say take both uh, the squirrel and the synthetic. Yeah, and we can start. Uh, let's say let's start with the tail since it's kind of the <laughs> the essence of the cat or its most uh, uh, cool part. So um, and just let's fill in the brush. So what now we're trying to explore? We're gonna explore, trying to explore the movement because actually you can go both. You can go starting from the thin part and going big or the opposite. You can start from the big part, pressing your brush and then, yeah, so let's, Let's explore these two movements. So let's say I can start with a thin one and then I continue pressing, pressing my, my brush, yes, yeah, so also widening up. And then the last moment I kind of yeah, stick, stick my brush and, yeah. or maybe the opposite. First I put my brush and I let it kind of sit the color and then I continue and I like slowly lift, lift it up. Yeah, so just kind of let's let's play around with, with these movements. Yeah, and I'll take also the squirrel. And yeah, so if you have different brushes, feel free also to try different ones to see which one will work for you better for um mm -hmm. and then of course. This, this, this squirrel is, um, yeah, or I start with a thin, and then um. Huh? How is going on the tails? Yeah. I was laughing because my cat's snoring. <laughs> or let's say also can try at a different shape of 
tail. So maybe also it's changing on on, on the movement. Yeah, it's starting yeah. and then and then we make the end of this fluffy fluffy. Right? Yeah. Fluffy thing and let's see which other tails we put here. Okay, I don't know. So these are my tails. Let me see this is. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. And I've switched brushes. So the ones on the the ones on that side were with the brush like your brush. Mm -hmm. And then the ones on this side are with a, with my favorite angled brush. Awesome. So which one you I like the angled brush, but yeah. that, I just like the angled brush. <laughs> I think we should always work with our preferred preferred material. I could possibly do with getting a bigger one. <laughs> And um, the second element I suggest we try are the ears. Yeah. So since they're also these kind of sharpy things. Um, one interesting thing is actually like, let's say when, when you have finished the tail, yeah, your brush might kind of, is a bit curvy. So you can actually kind of see, yeah, like uh, put it a bit like on with the side. So the, the end of the brush kind of creates this pointy um, triangle. Yeah? So you can kind of play yeah. it around and see how fat is the brush, how, how huge the triangle it's getting. What happens if I move a bit? Yeah, so I kind of sit my brush with the triangle, but then maybe if I move, so then I get the bit the longer, um, yeah, and then horizontal, vertical, a bit, yeah, maybe a bit. Because of course, um, let's say for creating the ears, I can take also smaller size and then let's say paint, like we use, like we paint sometimes, yeah, with acrylics. So I just, I kind of like create the contour and then I just fill in. Someone's okay, joining I, us. Yes, and it's, it's the girl who signed up in, in um, Event bright, so let's meet her. Hello, 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 Gustella. Welcome. Yeah, we have already started, um, but um, yeah, there will be recordings so you can watch the theory we've started. And um, now we are, we have just like um, any piece of paper, the computer one, and just practicing some parts of the cats. So we did the tails, now we do the ears. And what was the uh, part I was telling about the ears? Yeah, so we try to find among our brushes like very nice way. So I find, okay, the big brush, let's say too big, probably the smaller synthetic will work better. But the idea is of course that you leave like one touch. Yeah, maybe two and then your ear. Cause then it's always will look nicer rather let's say as i was saying like painting with acrylics when you paint the border and then you get in kind of coloring in yeah it's um it might look more accurate but i think still this emotional and this part yeah, you know one touch i think it's it's always beating the and the, the mechanical part so Mm -hmm. okay. Can I see my ears? Let me see your ears. Uh huh. Good, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I think so, I get better as I work down. Yeah, the practice it's like really, um, you know, what what That's makes sense. <laughs> All right. Um, now we can choose one of the cats um this one what you say yeah yeah let's go with this one and again first let's take again the computer paper first and we're just gonna practice the cat but now we're gonna be thinking about proportions so um to for the idea of this sumi yeah the catching the essence of the object and leaving all the unnecessary details away means that actually you need to study the object. Yeah? You need to know it well. So then um, 
then you're not lying yeah then um then one can really feel you know that it's a leaf it's a bird uh, because you know how the legs are uh, holding how they are moving how uh, the correct you know shape of the muscles of the backbone everything is going so the better you know it uh, huh? um okay we're kind of now <laughs> yeah we, we, we haven't let's say started the cats so yeah so we um but still we're gonna now practice the proportions yeah so then when we go for our paper we don't have it like too um disproportionate let's say too small head or too something or i mean unless of course it's the something you are intentionally intentional to yeah. um what's another interesting point of um did this uh, art that also um can help you with doing the proportions it's the empty spaces so let's say i did my tail and then I can, then I, let's say, go for, uh, for the body. And um, let me show you. So of course this cat I, I found somewhere that I did, yeah. So um, you can go and study, okay, how far away is the nose from the end of the tail? How big is this space in between? Yeah, so then I, I shall try kind of repeat this shape in between the cat. So this will help me also get to get nicely. It, it will not be that this space will be too long, meaning that my head is too up, yeah, or um, too big, meaning that my cat is too thin. And yeah, so kind of these empty spaces also help us. That's so we should also kind of, yeah, I will leave then this cat also somewhere. So both cats shall help, yeah. And then again, first, cheap piece of paper so then we are not stressed and we are not uh, worried and and then we can kind of make our plan yeah so let's say shall i start tail here i was studying this this image that i found and i think they actually did both sides so they started from the back going this side leaving this kind of fat point in the end but then you see those lines as if it's a dry brush strokes. Yeah, so actually you could go maybe like one movement from the back to the end of the tail. And the second movement actually could go here from this part of the tail back. Yeah, and then you can see those strokes, yeah. And then of course we, then we can go back, recharge our brush and do this uh, part of the body. Yeah, so this, this, this line. So we are leaving kind of here, lots of uh, black paint. And then we use the typical watercolor technique, yeah. Those, um, yeah, fading out. Yeah. So just I clean my brush, and then with a the clean watery brush, I take some color from here and yeah, move it to to the back. Yeah. And um, yeah, let's practice. Then we go to the paper, and then I tell a bit more about. Um, drying uh, uh sort of like using dry paper or um using wet yeah so as we've discussed it depends on the, the quality of paper but we can also go tricky a bit and let's say i can make wet just the part of the tail but the part of the head i leave dry because there are lots of details then i don't have to wait for it to dry or use the hair dryer yeah so kind of if i plan my my sketch this way it can also work but just let's yeah let's practice what what so maybe i go and then i slowly press yeah and and i see okay and then i also uh, what's the other thing that i discover how much paint i need yeah so now my brush was like wasn't charged much with paint and i see when I got till the end of the tail, it's it's very it's very light, yeah. So um, yeah, I experiment. Of course, then I can sit again and go back, yeah. But then it needs to be. And then, of course, trying to do it like with the more um, 
relaxed yeah so the muscles shouldn't be like your, your shoulders the hand shouldn't be stiff yeah so if if emotionally you you let let yourself do the mistakes and yeah, then the strokes usually they get always better yeah and then now i can practice the body and i can again take a look yeah so it goes somewhere actually in the middle between this tail on the back and the end of the tail. So these two lines, yeah, this kind of part of the neck and then the part already of the body. Yeah, so something like this. And then I can just kind of press a bit my brush to fill in. Yeah, so I did the contour. Yeah, of course I can correct it a bit if, if I want, yeah, if I get to, yeah. So I make it here. Um, dark and then what I go and I go with the clean brush and I can just uh, dilute yeah so and then I can dilute it back to the tail yeah you see here on this picture in on my phone it's actually like they did also very nice like this stroke of the body yeah so can now experiment if it works yeah so uh, but it's it's not maybe can you can try yeah? so and now so my plan would be do the tail this line of the body then fade out the paint to have the the back and um, and then I would of course change the brush let's say the tail I did with the big here of course I go with a smaller one and. Um, and again, yeah, I can go, let's say here, of course, uh, let's say for, for the ear. Yeah, and then I see this movement. Yeah, so of the face. Yeah, and then, okay, here now I didn't really match. My face needed to be a bit there. If I'm wrong, I can, I mean, it depends, but sometimes I can still have a chance to correct. So if I get the wrong, in the position, yeah, maybe still it allows like, yeah, maybe, yeah. And then again, I can fade away, yeah, a bit. And here also feel free to use the paper towel if needed. If something is like really too much, too, um, too dark, then of course I can, um, so the, the paper towels in this technique, they are kind of going together with the brushes. Feel free to use them, yeah? So for example, I did the face and now the part where the eye is gonna be, I can actually go and dry a bit. Yeah, so later, um, later when it's dry, I can add few touch-ups so then we have the feeling of um, of the eye. Yeah, and then of course we see here some whiskers can experiment doing some. Yeah, but the point, so, okay, whiskers maybe is already a bit like too, too much for this sketch. The point of this sketch is of course, you plan your, um, uh, how you how you moving? Where are you starting? Yeah, and and so on and so on. Yeah. So, 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 so. Yes. All right. I will prepare. Actually, not 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 a bit sketch. Yeah. So, um. Yeah. Then of course, as I mentioned, like to do to have this tail fluffy. Yeah, then this, uh, but of course I'm already too late. Yeah, we're gonna do it now when we do the real cat, when you clean it out. So this one's away for now and let's take a real paper. So, um, so I will try to take the 200. So let's say that's the worst um, scenario. Yeah? <laughs> Let's see, or um, yeah, sketch. Yeah. 
close the Facebook. And since we are not doing um, um, like all the borders, and actually I can just um, let's say fix it just the corners. Yeah, and as I said, we are not uh, making this paper wet. Yeah, with um, another cat, when I use the other paper, then we can. You know. And yeah, how how is going, Karen? How's going with the first pre sketch? Let me. Hey, not bad at all. Yeah, maybe the tail. The end of the tail a bit more fat than the starret. Yeah, so the body I really love, the feeling of proportions. Yeah, you're natural. Yeah, so just the, um, uh, actually, probably, yeah, in this computer one, uh, like in this on my phone, the tail actually looks like one, one thickness. Yeah, so um, it's probably, it reminds me a bit of this, probably. Because in this sumie they talk a lot about this zen circle and there is also this exercise they do with the brush just doing the circle it actually maybe you know so it has this maybe philosophical something uh, story in it um but as you feel yeah maybe the, the tail could be a bit more fat here going thin and and so if you're using this mixed paper then i suggest yeah we also don't make it wet um Let's just go and then we dilute uh, those parts to fade out, yeah, the bleeding. Yeah. All right, I will fill in a bit more paint since we're already doing kind of. Uh, so then I have it more dark. So I have my brushes ready. Uh, and. Uh, Fill in the brush. Yeah, of course, this feeling of how wet or how dry is the brush. Of course, it comes with the time. And it's really important. Yeah, sometimes kind of you have it wet, it's too wet, but you feel it, then you kind of can wipe it a bit with the paper towel, yeah, or the border of your cup if it's too much. So, yeah. or if it's too dry, so it's kind of. Here, I can't really help you. It's really about the practice and knowing your materials and, and so on. Yeah. So, okay, I have my brush really filled in with the paint. So I'll try to start from the back and I hope I will have enough ink, enough, enough of color to finish the tail. And let's see, yeah. And so I kind of, yeah. Sometimes you can move a bit around uh, in the air, yeah, to kind of imagine, okay, where, where it's gonna be. And then let's just go. Yeah, and the end of the tail, I kind of sit my brush with more fat. Yeah, okay, that again, so. So it happened again, yeah, the, the end of the tail got a bit not so, so actually I just can sit again and let's say what happens if I go a bit back. And I leave this brush and I take a bit smaller and now I dilute it. So what I want, I want to dilute this, this side of the tail up, oh, it's going a bit too much. And it's going too much, no worries, the paper towels. Like if you're quick, they're gonna, um, yeah. so it means I just had a bit too much water when it's floating too much, yeah? So actually, yeah, so watercolors is really about learning to have a feeling of how much water you need. Yeah? Yeah, so here, and I'm kind of, when I'm moving, so I, touch a little bit the part of what I've painted. So like half and half. 
Okay, my tail kind of got into disaster, but it's nothing you can't save. No. So yeah, so I just went with a bit more paint, but still trying to get. Yeah, so the fluffiness may, doesn't have to be everywhere. So maybe like on the outer sides of the tail can be fluffy. Yeah, there is also like you can just sit some drops of the water and then you see it, it will be like pushing the paint away. Yeah, but then in this case, it will be creating kind of, um, you will see, to be creating, of course, the emptinesses. So then some parts will be like lighter, yeah. If because of course you are putting just clean, clean water. Yeah, okay, I've experimented with my tail. Yes, yeah, so I've mentioned, and of course it's it's not a real sumi yes, and we since we are really correcting a lot, not doing extra, yeah. And then of course, we also remember our general rule. Yeah, know where to stop. <laughs> don't don't overdo. Yeah, and it's easy to once you have a feeling, okay, it's it's becoming worse. <laughs> this is this is the moment yeah. because it's normal. We all tend to uh, to want to get more inside to, to correct and. Uh, all right, now I will move. So I felt a little bit more paint. And let's do the body. So as we said. So these two lines somewhere in the middle, yeah, between there and there and um, so the, the neck and, and again, like a little bit in the air I move. So it helps me kind of define a bit the proportion. Yeah, how I want my cat to be. Yeah, and somehow it's also, of course, a bit safer when you do cat a bit smaller and of course you can make it a bit bigger always. Yeah, but if you make it too big then of course, you can't go in, you know, in making it smaller. So, if it's if it helps, you know, to <laughs> okay, so one line, second line, and then I just kind of tap tap my brush a bit to fill in this the space, yeah. and then again, so those this this bleeding have my brush and let let it flow. Yeah. So here in this case, I took now too much of too much of paint in the first. So now when I'm doing the bleeding, it's still kind of going too dark. Yeah. So I just go and take off with the uh, uh, paper towel. Yeah. Like unfortunately, it could be nice when it's like with the one touch natural, but I want the rest of the body of the cat to be more gray. Yeah, so it means so I had to remove some of the yeah, and so connecting this body with the tail again. Yeah, you choose the, the moment, the part where you want the body to be connected. So some part stays a bit kind of disconnected from the body. So of course, the also very nice way is you use your brush, you make it like clean and dry. And the same like with paper towel, just with the brush, of course, I can clean out some areas. And for this part, actually the synthetic works. Uh, well, 
yeah, both uh, the, this natural hair can also, yeah, but um, so, okay. yeah. All right. I will go quickly to the head part because then we can go with the um, So the head part again, visually in the air, I imagine where my nose will be. If it helps, maybe also kind of starting, not from the ear, but starting maybe from uh, this turn from neck to the mouth. Yes, because in my pre-sketch, I started with the ear. And when I got to this uh, angle of the neck and mouth, I had no space. Yeah, so maybe if it makes sense, I give a few strokes here, so then I'm a bit more kind of. Yeah, so I'm doing just strokes, and later I will fill in up the space. Yeah. And of course, so this movement where the eyes are, the end of the nose. and the ear yeah so as i mentioned of course we try to get it again with one stroke to do the ear but it's normal if it's not but at least you know i try maybe it... and then again so all that i have here i go fading out Yes, with the ear. Yeah, and now the process of cleaning yeah, also comes in. So I said, okay, where the part of I want the eye to be. Then I just tap. Yeah, I can do it both. Can do it with the brush. Can do it with the um, paper towel. Yeah, so. Yeah, and then of course I give a, a let it dry. Yeah, before I do anything with the eye. Otherwise, it's not, it's not gonna work. Okay, so. And the moment when you feel, okay, that's not going, and then just, um, Yeah, the moment. Yeah, my face. Maybe I do a bit more. Yeah, of course it's not easy. Of course you need like to, to paint maybe thousands of yeah faces of cats and to have it more. Um, So what else? And before I wait for my eye, I can do maybe the whiskers.
Yeah, the whiskers, of course, it's a short and quick stroke. Yeah, the more quick and secure you go, the better. I'm too big. Too big. Okay. If I if I get my whiskers too big, of course it's um, yeah don't go there. So the way the only way to correct is kind of just to uh, take off some intensity of paint. Yeah, so just kind of very just vertically I press with the, my paper towel, so it becomes a bit more faded away. But I can't really dilute it a lot there because and it will create a mess all around. Yeah, then it will not look. And then it will be some black parts around. And... Mm -hmm. Karen, how's going with your cat? It's pants. <laughs> <laughs> My first one was definitely better. Mm, interesting. Actually, it's my my thing also the same. It's also maybe because like once we get to the real paper, we we, we tend to tighten up. Mm -hmm. But when you say ah, this paper doesn't really matter, is it? You're much looser. That makes a lot of sense actually. I really don't like it. But there mm -hmm. you go. I'll put on my whiskers and see if that helps. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's probably okay. We <laughs> moving to the other kit. Yeah, here also tried not to do too much details with the eyes, not. not yeah, but this is also like with the watercolor, you always spend much more paper, yeah, than acrylics. Because it's like Strokes didn't work. Take paper, try it again. It really helped you saying you have to do it thousands of times. And that's <laughs> what we've got to bear in mind is this first time I've ever done it. So, first time I've ever painted it. Oh, yeah. No, no, it's, oh. it's really, really, it's. Um, if you see those people who are professional watercolorists, you will see they, their garbage bin. It's like, you know, full, full of paper. So, and, and I, I was watching some like interview with the people who dedicate to watercolors, and that's the way like they work on one painting, let's say. So, they go, they practice some some parts, and um, yeah, if it turned well, then they move to let's say another part. Then this part didn't work, and then okay, yeah, then like maybe they continue to do something, but then again, they take a new paper uh, and try again. Those parts worked. Try to correct the ones that didn't go ahead. So till you know. Till you have your snow with snow, till you have the light on the snow um, shining clean and not some dirty. And, uh, all right, I'll leave my cat, this one. And yeah, then the next one, 
I'll, I'll try again then the, the other paper uh, where I'm going to make it some areas wet with the clean water. The only one, give me just a minute. I'll need to change my water, otherwise, it's all too to the topic. Back. Right. New water is here. I'm going to get clean water as well. I've just sent you. I've just sent your picture. <gasps> Lovely. Go ahead to the water and I take a look for your cat. All right, we are back. Let's take a look. Oh, not bad. I find some sweetness in, in, um, in your cat. A little bit maybe with the ears. Um, just kind of a little bit maybe <clears throat> this exact shape. Um, yeah, that maybe one is. Mm, but could be, yeah. So um, maybe just both too pointy, like this original one was. That one ear was kind of a bit more, like not so pointy in the other one. But um, yeah, and then of course, yeah, this movement a bit like of this face, yeah. But as again, this one like, like as we practice tails and the ears, then you just also take this movement, this specific, because then if the cat moves differently, then this movement again is different. And you practice this, these lines, yeah? But the feeling, really like the body. Look how beautiful turned out this, this, uh, this bleeding, yeah? And this is what like people like about watercolors, yes? Yeah? That kind of, you create some of those motions and they really, really um, turn out can be beautiful. Yeah, and um, and this is what happens all the time in watercolors. You get some accidents. They are lucky. You love them, and um, uh, you know you're happy about them. And in some areas, they don't work. I mean, I get it all the time on my artworks. Yeah, so I can take any of my parts and I say, okay, this part sounds really cool. The other area not really so it's all the time yeah so the body really awesome i actually also like the tail yeah it has some um maybe it could like work a bit like the end of the tail that goes with the back and yeah but still it's nice it has it's lighter so it's kind of cool no i still think it's uh, you know um it's interesting and the whiskers are also cool yeah. So which one was your second choice? The Siamese. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I have a message here from the Kukashella. Okay, I read it. All right. Yeah, she wants so okay, she, she's from Hong Kong, so she says her time difference is too, <laughs> too big and she'll go for it recording um okay this one at the bottom awesome so then i take so now i take 300 paper yeah size and um i will stick it um i'll try to stick it now in the full since i plan to kind of have more water on it. Oh no, we didn't practice first. Let's practice first. But okay, I started. 
think. But of course, let's take let's take again the simple paper and just plan out how we're gonna do it. Yeah. So what we're starting with tail, with body, with the what what will be our <clears throat> process. Um, yeah, so I suggest again, we, we start with the tail and we start with this darkest, darkest area. Yeah, so I can sit here. I can even maybe like just move around my brush, like sitting those, um, yeah, this, this, this. So it's kind of just lots of, lots of pain there. And uh, yeah, and then I can, water a bit my brush if it has still too much ink and then I can go and go for the whole like body so the story will be that this part of the body if you have it wet it will be floating and then of course I will be fading out again here inside yeah but here then already for example I did too much dark at the top yeah then of course we want less paint so then maybe after the tail you really need to clean your brush full yeah and then um a bit so. um the part of the head i will not be making wet because it's like really detailed yeah i will use this technique we did previously, I will put just black and then I will bleed out just the part I need. Because here in this, I made just whole paper wet and then the header didn't work because either I had to wait till it's all dry and yeah, so. But uh, yeah, let's experiment also with the, again, with ears. Oh, and the important part. Um, before actually the ear. So once you did the tail, then you kind of did all this um, spreading out the body. Yeah, so a bit more kind of all here grayish. Yeah, but also not, not too much, like that, really lighter. Then you take the paper towel and make it like, I make it a bit the corner and I take off some part, yeah. So of course, okay. In this computer paper, it's not working. But what I'm meaning that we need this to get clean this angle. So then it's kind of the feeling that this mouth is inside the, the tail. Yeah. You can even plan it from the start when you do the tail. So you kind of actually do the tail with this movement, a bit more fluffy, and then do this corner at once. Yeah. And then also clean it. Yeah. But I think this is the nice part uh, to have it. Yeah? And then again, experiment a bit with my ears. Where, where are they going to be? So those sharpy parts. Yeah? And then I see it and then I think, OK, what's, which part should be bleeding? Yeah, maybe the, OK, ah, I'll open and show you the original also. So here is the, the original that I was getting the inspiration of it. Yeah, so it's you can see even the back is almost white, almost no back at all. Yeah, so let's let's try also to catch. And yeah, look, look how how amazing is this <laughs> this cat yeah? and how how much <laughs> frustration you should go through before getting to this. His results, but so okay. My sketch was terrible. Doesn't count. I was I was talking too much. It was you get distracted when you talk. Okay. So the um, I don't know, Karen. Maybe you try and also your mixed media paper try also doing these wet areas. Yeah, why not? But then I said, is again, let's make it wet just the tail and the body. And this inside circle will leave without um, the water. 
because you you will also feel that actually when you do this bleeding the bleeding will go till the part where are the water so it will it also works kind of as a part where you stop yeah so um, here is so i kind of actually now painting tail and the body but just with the water yeah so you can think of it this way and um, and how to see i just turn my head and i look from a side like i try to work parallel to uh, to watch parallel to my paper then i see i see where is my water yeah because of course when i look at the top it's hard for me to understand where i made it wet where i didn't made it wet and once i just start looking from um and, as I, and at once I see this glancy, glancy part, and uh, so here the body here. Yeah, and then I leave this inside part. Yeah, empty. Okay, and one last. And what can actually can do not really in this case with the tail we can really not moving as we did with the previous tail we can actually just do the seeding the brush so um i fill in with the paint and so instead of moving moving the brush i can actually just try so i just like point and you see it starts kind of going so i can just kind of try to fill in the area i need and it starts floating another important part of the working with watercolors it's good when you have it uh, on the separate like um, cardboard or plastic thing because then you can control where it floats so I can, let's say, change the angle of my thing. And now all the paint will be floating, let's say, down. Yeah? Um, if I keep my, my cardboard uh, straight, then it's floating everywhere. So actually, do like this. Yeah. Yeah, and even, you see, 300 paper it's still doing the paddles. So I probably wetted it too much. Also, yeah, um, actually like my mistake was not giving enough time to, um, for paper to soak in. Yeah, probably again, like talking, then you rush. Um, but um, yeah, so actually, like when you use this technique of wetting the paper, you always need to give um, like one, two minutes for the water to soak in. And, yeah, but nothing is. Um, I'm still optimistic. Okay. So the parts where I find it's there too, I can sit my paint. Yes, I have my tail really, really, really dark. Okay. And now the fun part, then clean your brush. So as we've decided our back of the cat is really kind of transparent so have your brush clean in the water and then we just go kind of with the yeah i just grabbed a little bit from the tail and that's already enough and i go and then again try follow see a bit of the proportions yeah so actually like this movement of of the back is um, goes a bit mm. Mm. 
goes a, a bit more behind the tail. Yeah, if, if, okay, sorry, here is the original. Again, if there are disasters somewhere, either clean brush, either paper towel can, can go correcting it. And then I slowly go inside the body as well. Yeah, so in this case, actually, I would prefer taking a new paper, but okay, let's try to work on the head and what. Okay, there oh, my head is dry. So again, I plan and I see, okay, where my, this inside part of the face is. So I go with the ears accordingly. Yeah, so it may be different from this first one because then in this case, I already look at the parts, um, you know, how, how my current, image is so I get into the proportions. Okay. Then I imagine in the air a little bit. It helps me to find uh, have the feeling and a sharp corner for one ear. Uh, and then some outline for the second ear, as the second ear is more like white. And, and a bit dark, this third part of the, of the head. And then a bit of bleeding out, yeah, but softly. So maybe not too much water on my brush. Yeah, and then again, I uh, clean my brush and with some water, I try to bleed in already to the part where the nose of the cat is, but carefully because then it might, uh, yeah, because we, we want to save this part, the white, the most white part is yeah, this where the nose is. And then later again, when it's dry, one can put those strikes of eyes and nose, but they're like very, very gentle. Mm -hmm. So, and I will check on my proportions. For the bit you're doing at the moment, the ears um, on the forehead, are you using watery paint or thicker paint? So I, I've sit, uh, let's say, just with um, on dry paper, a thick amount of paint for the ears, yeah, and this middle part of the head, and then just kind of bleeding out, yeah, uh, to uh, towards the, the nose of the cat. Yeah? So, um, but really, really carefully, so I don't let the bleeding go a lot. It means when I do the bleeding, I have really a little bit of water on my brush because otherwise it will bleed too much to this corner, yeah, to the point of, um, yeah. and then 
later I can correct the nose of my cat by kind of painting black the, um, the tail again, let's say, yeah? So if, of course, my nose is not perfect, so I kind of correct it with the, with the part of the tail, I try to correct the, the nose, yeah? Well, not easy at all, but. Yeah, this is all challenging also <laughs> for me, Karen. I'm a really ac acrylic person and, you know, it's, <laughs> but I find it like, you know, just like, um, and the thing is sometimes it works and sometimes like you're happy. It's like, wow, cool. Like, huh, cool, it's not, not that scary as, as they all, you know, but sometimes it's just like, It's all, Tell you me about your travels. How is it going? Um, um uh, hello, hello. Sorry, it's my connection, probably. Hi, hi, Karen. Yeah, it's my. So um so we've stopped. So which are your troubles with this cat? Tell me, or which are your no, I'm I'm not overly troubled actually, unusually. Oh huh? and unusually I'm kind of well, I was ahead of you until I stopped to watch you do your ears. Nice. Which is very unusual. I think I might have done them a bit thick, but there you go. So, for example, I feel my head is a bit too little in according to the whole body. Mm, I'm slightly the wrong angle, but there you go. But I feel I can't. Really... Yes, I could have the same problem actually. The same problem for which the head. Or first get a little more. Yeah, well, the head's a little bit small, but I'm actually just making it bigger. Yeah, so I actually, um... That's actually somehow works that we tend to make things smaller when we paint, mm -hmm. but then it's good because it means we can always make it bigger. Yeah, and the opposite wouldn't work. Okay, now. And sometimes this making bigger can be just for like one side or something, you know, maybe it's not, it's not always like all around the, the head. Sometimes it can be like really big. What's the funny little creature called in Star Wars? I think I've got that. <laughs> Okay, don't know about the Star Wars, but uh, I think yeah, I might uh, <laughs> I get an idea what you what you. Uh... Hi, Coco Stella. I see you uh, watching. Um, I understand you you have like very late time, 
but like there will be like the full recording yeah for you so you can watch but of course uh, yeah happy you're here also also live yeah. today is a bit unusual yeah of course we usually do the famous artworks uh today's a bit exception i think i also emailed you telling about it we just experimented with this technique and, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm not touching my kids anymore, otherwise I'm going to go ruining. It's better ah, to move to another cat. <laughs> we, can, we can do maybe like one more, the third, or depends how you feel. How it's, um, uh, okay, she wrote something in the chat. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 of course, it's like so, so much light. So, um, yeah, you, okay, she... So what time is it? It's mm. not that bad yet. It's Let me send you this. Yes. I think I think it's possibly just unfinished as much as anything. Mm -hmm. oh, right. ah, uh -huh. Okay, sweet, sweet one. So um, a little bit, so this also this technique, let's say when you do the, um, this connection, let's say where the end of the white nose gets into the tail, it's like you really want to have it like very straight. Yeah, so you have here like fluffy. Yeah, so, but actually like when it's, yeah, as I said, like it's cool because you did the tail this way, but then you can also, and you let's say maybe cleaned or left this corner white, but actually I also did it here. Then later I went with the black again and just like with the dry kind of drew again, the part of the face, like with the, with the sharp, you know, border. And then it also led me to correct, yeah, the shape, let's say if, because um, for example, um, like from the general feeling is cool, but for example, to have this feeling that, okay, the nose is here. Yeah, I would want to kind of lift it a bit up because like then, then the face is a bit too long, like from the areas where the nose should be. So I, I would kind of want to feel this area a bit dark and then with this sharp dark line kind of make this accent that this nose in, is inside. Yeah, so um, kind of like this. Uh, I'm gonna have to wait for it to dry before I can do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very wet. Well yeah, yeah. That's um, uh, that's for sure. Yeah, we're going there in when it's wet. We'll just ruin everything. Will not, will not work. And but the body is cool. Yeah, it's like very nice. Your line is going fading away. This half still have some black line, but then it's more gray, 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 more transparent. Yeah. So in this case, I really like even your one better than mine didn't work. Yeah? And yeah, so also a bit more practicing, like you can do this cleaning up with the brush. Yeah, when the brush is dry, all I do is kind of I clean and then I yeah wipe. And then I can again take out some, and then I can construct a bit the shape with the. Yeah, so yeah. both like I either I make my paper towel like with a sharp corner, I can also take off, or of course with the brush. Yeah, there are a bit differences. So sometimes you want to feel that better the paper towel, sometimes better the brush. Uh, but, um, yeah, but this cleaning out, it kind of belongs, it's not that you do the cleaning 
out because you made a mistake. It's actually the part of the painting. Yeah, it's like a lot of those artists, they also do you kind of cover everything with one paint and then those parts that you planned already that need to be clean, you just with, yeah, with brush or with, you take them out and it's kind of, uh, let's say, the <laughs> opposite of the, of the painting. Yeah, so for example, maybe some part on the ear. Yeah, like, okay, here I have, here I just messed up, so I made two ears black. Yeah, here I tried again as original, it was one ear kind of, let's say from inside. So in your case, kind of, you could just with a wet brush, try to take a bit of the corner. Yeah, and then it, it becomes more faded away, let's say. And then you have one ear more dark, one ear more, but yeah, but I think, you can try to do this, the shape of the face of the cat. Yeah, once it's dry, kind of just, um, it's also interesting. Sometimes somewhere you can leave like a line. Yeah, that's also maybe belongs a bit to this technique, just kind of empty line, but somewhere it's more the filling up the shape. Yeah. But then I think it should be much, much more closer to the ears. Yeah, like not, not in these, part of your tail because like if I say it's from here where the this black ends and the white starts until here like it's a huge distance for the face of the cat yeah um, yeah like I think it should be like here in the middle so this white space you have like the the, the face of the cat would end here in the middle yeah so you can like no no worries just like do here like one thin line and then the rest you fill up with this black and then it will be cool you will have this huge fluffy end of the tail yeah so your end of the tail will become more fluffy kind of and since you have here like really clean already it will be huh? so can uh um, cool 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 mm. In fact, let me go in while it's still there and just make my top tail, tail a bit bigger. Yeah. So that I can make my face shorter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so here, like, let's say the, the original. Oops, um, right, and, um, So you're staying for one more cat, don't you, Karen? Or what you say? Sorry? Like, are we doing doing one more cat? I'm easy either way. I'm easy either way. Okay, then I mean I'm, I'm really into, into experimenting in one more cat, and I would really like give you a second try for this my first disastrous <laughs> cat. And um, I wouldn't exactly describe it as disastrous. Um, it's disastrous because of this paper that got all curvy. And, <laughs> like in in the shape proportions, yeah, maybe like. I tried to save it in this way, but but even now, like here, this 300 paper, yeah? So my mistake was not letting the water soak in and it got like curvy, yeah? So um, and there are like lots of these little details with, with this water and paper and that <laughs> like, yeah, you can use all, all the same stuff, but, but okay. 
So yeah, let's go for it then. I'll go for this one and I'll take again the paper. So this is what I meant, yeah? Uh, like with the, you have this other plate and sometimes let's say I can put even like this and all my board, let's say is facing down. So it means all the water is floating down or I can put it the opposite way, like from this side. And in watercolors, it's really useful, especially if you do some, you, you want to put like the sky or the sea and like one big gradient then it's really useful that um, the paint flows in, in one in some one direction, like you know, use the gravitation for them. Okay, no, first let's again um, forgetting, let's do the sketch first. So practice the movement, the tail, the shape, the head, and so on. Yeah, no comments about the internet. <laughs> I will complain to this company who is the internet provider. It happens. So, so in this kit, I would actually start first with the body. So maybe I would go first, like trying to check the. Yeah, I'll show, of course, the everything first. Told you that um, idea. Yeah, so here was a very nice fluffy original. Yeah. And here, of course, you can see how all the borders are um, really fluffy. It means, of course, there probably was some of this cotton paper, and was, it's all a very like. But okay. And very here, very interesting to have this white stripe on the on the back so here i try to recreate it didn't really work but it gives the yeah, the feeling of the backbone so um so i would start try to start the cat with the um, shape of the body trying if possible get this white um get this white line yeah and then of course, so depending on paper we're using, we can go again for making a bit fluffy the borders. Yeah, so kind of really lots of like inside that we mechanically can make borders fluffy. And plan the composition. I have already no space left for the tail. So that's important. Yeah, it's important to, to test. So now if I take the paper, yeah, again, so I would need um, tail. So I start again. Take another paper. So now I visually say, okay, my tail is gonna be here, meaning the body, it's actually almost like half of the page only. Yeah, so even if it feels that the body is huge, yeah, so it would be something like this, then trying to get this part, then just filling in with the black, going fluffy with the borders, and, and then it would be the Tail. I watch also how how high is the tail, how um, like where it ends. So maybe not till yeah. So the tail. I would also then go and do fluffy as well. And then for the head, I would switch again to like smaller brush. And here we see very nicely the the ear and. Actually, the face, they're more faded away. And it helps us to show that it's more far away that the cat is looking like far away from us. And then of course, and then I clean a bit my brush, then it has already less ink and I can do the. And here it will be again, probably the same story. First, the head will be a bit too small and then we will start making the head a bit too big. Yeah, it happened with me first painting here. 
in the sketch somehow again. Yeah, so, okay, this is my practice practice story. Right, right, right. So I will. I will a bit more. All right, all right. Okay, the most important not to forget, leave the space enough for the tail. Because huh? even if we do this simple practice of measurement as we always do, and I measure where the tail ends and the body ends, and then I compare it with the height of the kid, it's almost a square. So it's just like, if, if I draw the outline around the cat, it will be almost, almost the square what space it takes, yeah? Of course, it's a bit higher where the head is, but still this size that I measure here, so where the tail is ending and the body is ending. And if we compare it vertically, yeah? Almost one-to-one -one gets till the start of the ear, so. It's important to have it in mind. Okay, have my brush. Mm -hmm. It's red enough, enough of paint. And we'll start. So the tail will go over here. Binding. Then at once I try to mark the little white thing and I go with the rest. And then I kind of try to fill in with the black because it's all the dark body. So I can even charge more my brush. Fill in. And maybe I go it once for the tail, and then I'll do this beauty exercise and for both tail and the body. And my tail. Okay, not so too curly, too curly, but okay. Yeah. Disaster. Didn't work out. Okay, let's see if with the bleeding can something be saved. And the fluffiness. And again, not, not too much water on the brush. So we want it to float, but so I kind of have my brush wet, but I wipe it anyway a bit with the. Yeah, now my tail, the shape of my tail, of course, is like too, too huge, too fat. The only thing, maybe if I just unite now the body and the tail somehow, I can. Have it more safe. So, what I try to do, yeah, no, for those two.
But okay, let's fight. This is also actually what is good thing in watercolors. But, um, a lot of times you do something, it doesn't work. And you actually want, you say, ah, it's a new paper. But sometimes it's really worth being fighting. And, or like even take, take it as a rule that you always take fighting till the end, only if it's already like really like, yeah. But it will improve the skills. It's also like one of these rules of uh, uh, that like experienced people suggest. And, uh, so let's see. Maybe it's still not that bad. Not that bad. Still maybe. Yeah. And then I make try to make the face. Less dark. And in this case, I need to make my face bigger because my fat turned out too fat. Okay, okay, something actually on my side. The only thing this with this white, say not white but light line on the back. The only thing is not leaving it white. Yeah, so it's kind of um, first we do it, but then still we add a bit more tone in it. Um, so it's actually like gray. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be like this huge contrast. It's more. Um, Mm. Black cat. Bad cat. <laughs> cat. <laughs> Let's see, let's see. Very fat. Oh, not that fat. <laughs> yeah, my one is very fat. But like this, I at least could save somehow the, the proportions. And <laughs> I think yours looks like a long haired cat, though. It looks really, really fluffy. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm actually happy. I, I, the first feeling I had when I did the tail that I was like, no, 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 take the new paper, but. Okay, looks a bit more like a rat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Karen, you already. Um, <laughs> so I can allow. Can no, I like it. I like it. <laughs> but um, yeah, of course, yeah, like. Yeah. You're so right. You're so true. It looks. 
Yeah, the face is too pointy, the tail is too thin, and the body is too fat, and that's why it looks like a rat. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, though, I do like the ear. <laughs> Um, I like that the second ear is pointing from the other side. This is like your, um, there is like little one. But um, yeah, yeah. So here it was a bit um, like the task was, let's say we, we do lots of black inside and we fluffy it out. Yeah, so with, with the light hairs and yeah, you, so you didn't get enough of much paint. And, and I've done it the other way around. Yeah, so, but it's like, I wasted like a huge bunch of black hair. Like I filled in once, I filled in twice, because it's like really needs to, yeah, to get them. Um, and, um, well, okay, it's exercise. I'm not, <laughs> um, yeah. I'd give it another go. This one can go in the bin. <laughs> this one for sure. Yeah, this one is, um, Honestly, like from all your three ones, um, like the first two could, so the, the second one, if you have it with the, like if you did this correction, so you went with the dry to correct the, sh the, the size of the face, yeah? Like if you can yeah. send it, I think this one is also definitely can be saved because like here all these, um, bleedings this fluffiness is really cool yeah and then if it worked to get the shape of the face in good proportion like this that the end of the tail got more fluffy and black i think that could be awesome and the first one was also good yeah the whiskers everything yeah maybe, maybe the ears could be less like pointy or something and yes 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 so, okay, this one is really difficult. <laughs> yeah. Because it's also, it has those eyes and the second eye has to be always smaller than the first because it's like this this perspective and yeah, yeah it's, uh, I think we, <laughs> if you don't I think mind, we need to stop here. We need to stop here because it's actually also uh, tiring. <laughs> it is tiring and I am tired because I've, because of course I taught earlier as well, and that's always so, tiring. Yeah, yeah. So, and um, but but yeah, the main idea was but, just like get the feeling to paint without the pen pencil sketch. Yeah, and experiment with all these water and brush and paint and floating and floating and cleaning and making dry some areas. So. Yeah, no, it's all good. I've really, really enjoyed it, and I've learned loads. So thank you very much. Very happy to hear it, Karen. Yes. Cool. Then I see you okay. next week. Yeah. See you next week. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you lots of Karen. Bye. Bye. Bye.